You're watching Single Process with Joe and Bob. We created these videos to help you navigate the difficult process of divorce. We hope this makes your journey a little easier. Our topic on this episode is modifying your divorce or separation agreement after you are divorced. What happens when circumstances change and you need your agreement to change? Because it happens like almost immediately. Like I feel like the minute the filing is done, <laughs> Your kids' activities start changing. Your well, I mean, income. in my circumstances, my daughter went from you know hitting a tennis ball on an outdoor court once in a while to playing yeah. national tournaments, and the costs associated with that were enormous. Yeah, I don't have that problem with my kids, but, <laughs> but we had all kinds of other issues. So I think this is a great topic, and we're thrilled to have Carol Orland here with us today. Uh, Carol's a founding member and partner at Broder and Orland, which is a law firm in Westport and Greenwich, Connecticut. She's been practicing family and matrimonial law for over 40 years. So thank you. Welcome, Carol. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, we're lucky to have you. We got a lot of questions for you. Okay. <laughs> so Carol, it seemed like the minute we got divorced, all these ideas yeah. that were great in theory or what we thought would be on paper, the practicalities just were different. The costs were different. Things started changing. Do you see this a lot? To some extent. So if you've come through a divorce with able and competent counsel, counsel who's experienced, you have a pretty good chance that you're able to project, at least for a reasonable period of time, what your expenses are going to be, what the family situation is going to be. Now, if there is a substantial change in circumstance, that's really the standard, then you can modify that agreement. Sometimes parties, again, will agree to modify if someone's lost his or her job. We right. just had that situation yesterday. And the parties agreed, okay, I get it. We're not going to go into court and spend all the money to fight about it. Let's agree on a reduced amount. Maybe you'll make it up at some other point or maybe you won't. Uh, but you have to have a substantial change in circumstance what if for you the don't court know? to really modify. Because yeah, a lot of like, times somebody will get a big bonus at year end. What if they don't disclose that? What if you don't know? Again, if the agreement is well written, and usually it is an agreement because most cases do settle rather than go to trial. You have provisions in your agreement. So you have reporting provisions that the parties are going to exchange tax returns, W-2s, 1099s, for the period of time where there's That's any order of support, let's say. Okay. And okay. so you'll know, you may not know right away because they don't report every day, but sometimes even in the agreement, you'll have a provision that says if there's any change in compensation, you'll immediately report it to the other party. Well, let's talk about a change that I've seen a lot of people go through, the cohabitation provision. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what that is and why it really is something a lot of people seem to be unaware of? As, I don't even know sign. what that is. So we have a law about cohabitation, and basically that's when, usually after divorce, somebody is living with another person, another person living with that party. Are you talking about and, a romantic relationship, or is it any living arrangement? Well, it's a good question. It's typically, practically speaking, a romantic relationship. And what the key is, though, it has to be a relationship that confers an economic benefit on that party. Okay. So, and I don't want to be demeaning about this, but if you're living with a person, let's say, who has no income, let's say it's an artist, somebody creative, or somebody who's not working outside the home, or somebody who's got a more menial job mm -hmm. and isn't really contributing mm -hmm. to defer your expenses... Well, most likely the support order isn't going to change. Yes, they're living together, but you're not having that economic benefit conferred. And that's really the okay. key. But if they're sharing the costs with you? Then that can be certainly a different issue because think about it. Um, if an ex-husband is paying alimony to his ex-wife and now her boyfriend is in the house and he's contributing to the mm -hmm. costs, her ex-husband wants to be able to have a reduction or eliminate alimony. Yeah. And, and very often that's equitable. That's something that should occur. So what should the client do? Should they be proactive about this and come to the attorney? Well, sometimes there's just no choice. You know, love sort of happens, right? It gets mm -hmm. in the way. So you make a decision. Am I going yeah, hope. to, yeah. you know, have this person live with me and we're going to share our finances and know that I have exposure for alimony being reduced, let's say. 
sometimes you take your chances. Sometimes your ex-husband just isn't that, you know, aggressive about going forward with it. Sometimes you have an agreement. Sometimes it's, it's the time to say to your ex-husband, you know what? Here's the situation I'm in. You're supposed to pay me alimony for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Let's agree on some lump sum buyout that works for you and works for uh -huh, me. Uh -huh. and, and then you're sort of free to do what you want, right? Okay. So that's an option. It's a sticky point of the law. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's hard, you know. You think about it sometimes because it usually tends to be a woman. Again, we don't want to be sexist, but it's usually the, the husband or ex-husband who's paying support to the woman. And now she's prevented from really going on with her, her life, life if she wants to right. continue to get alimony. Um, well, that's and really, never mind getting remarried, well, right? So here's, here's you just what lend alimony. You know, you see, it. But if you get remarried, at least you are now in a legal contract with somebody else and it may you know, have financial support that way. The problem is if you live with somebody, they could move out tomorrow. So well, it's to reduce true, your and alimony sometimes for that. that goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you file because there's cohabitation. By the time you get to court, they're no longer cohabitating. Mm -hmm. But you have to look at both sides because from the guy's point of view, it's often Absolutely. also. He's typically been, let's say, kicked out of his home, doesn't get to see his children as, as often as he used to, paying the support. And now the ex-wife's boyfriend's living there with his yeah, kids, that looks pretty right? Bad. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I see, I see both sides. There's two sides to that There's story. Two sides it's a to very that story. Difficult situation many times that arises, but okay. uh, that's the way it goes. Talk about changing kids' expenses. Sure. So um, we have child support guidelines in Connecticut, and um, that really is a formula pretty much where so every state would have this you just have to look up the, the child guidelines in your state well every uh, I, I, most states have an active mm -hmm. child support guidelines okay. they're different in every state yeah. mm -hmm. um, but in Connecticut it's it's really the the components that are meaningful to the bottom line is the income of the parties and the number of children and then you have this formula and you get to the bottom line where it says what the payor should be paying the payee for child support and there's also an add-on for extracurricular expenses. Usually you'll see a child support number, let's say, and then there'll be a sharing as well of extracurricular okay. or medical expenses in addition to that. And if that changes, again, by a certain amount, then you have a right to go in and ask that that be modified. But usually, typically, if it's changing that substantially, the parties, again, are going to look at the child support guidelines, they're going to see what they are, Hopefully, there can be some an adjustment agreement. between the two mm -hmm. of them. If not, you have to go in and modify child support. What happens if you have unallocated alimony, where your alimony and child support is lumped into one payment yeah. and not broken out? Yeah. Does that no. make it harder to modify post? It's a great it, question. It, it, it's a great question, and there's been some law about that as well. And you have to be very careful uh, when you're, let's say, drafting an agreement that has unallocated support and you want to have some provision in there that talks about the child support guidelines and what child support would have been because an unallocated does lump the two of them together. It's, the benefit is it's all treated as alimony, so it's tax deductible to the payor, mm -hmm. tax, you know, taxable Both to the payee. But the bottom line is typically the way you do that, the reason you do that is it gives you more spendable dollars to each of you rather than paying taxes. So it's a win-win typically. But what happens is if you have unallocated alimony and support, and let's say your child ages up and no longer should child support be a part of that, mm -hmm. then that order, you know, is gonna Needs look to change. Now again, in an agreement, typically you provided for something like that. So the trick is that you really have to find and work with a lawyer who really knows what he or she is doing. We 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 can't you know, think of every everything. Single, sure. single possibility that's going to come down the road. But we've done this enough. We have enough experience to know what's likely to happen here. You know, what are the ages of the kids? When are they going to age up? What happens when there's no more child support? Then we get to college education, which is a whole different issue. You need to anticipate. And with somebody who knows what he or she is doing, you're going to be able to anticipate a lot better. Huge. Hugely helpful. Thank you. Hugely so helpful, welcome. Carol. Really Thank you again yeah. so much. Yeah, for more information on how to manage your post-divorce agreement and changes, please log on to our website at singleprocess.me.